Okay. Nine o'clock. Huh? Three, two, one. Great. We got nine o'clock. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Mike's going to lead us in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Greg Scott. Here. Mark Serbeck. Present. John Vaughn. Present. Brad Newbecker. Present. Jenny David. Here. Item two, approval of the agenda. Are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? Any additions or corrections to the agenda? I'll make a motion and we accept the agenda as presented. Support. We have a motion from Commissioner Scott with support from Commissioner Serbrick to approve the agenda um, as presented. All in favor say yes. Yes, yes. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 3A, review of minutes. We have the August 26, 2021 regular meeting minutes. I uh, reviewed the minutes of August 26th. I'll make a motion to accept them as presented. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Scott, with support from Commissioner Vaughn to approve the August 26, 2021 regular meeting minutes. Is there any discussion on that? All in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed? Item 3B, September 2nd, 2021, Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. Has everybody had an opportunity to review those? I looked those over at the same time as the other ones, and I'll take a motion to accept them as presented. All support. We have a motion from Commissioner Scott with support from Commissioner Newbecker to approve the September 2nd, 2021 Committee of the Whole meeting minutes. All in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 3C, September 2nd, 2021 closed session meeting minutes. I believe those are all on our. They were here. I yep. looked at them. I signed off. I will take motion to accept it as presented. Support. Can I give you my? Here. Brad, you have yours. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We have a motion from Commissioner Scott. Do we have support? Yes. Support from Commissioner Sturbrook to uh, approve the September 2nd, 2021 closed session meeting minutes. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item four, public comment on agenda items. This is the first of two opportunities for public comment. On December 10th, 2020, the Board of Commissioners approved Resolution 20-77 to adopt rules of procedure that include a structure for public comment. This public comment period is limited to topics that appear on the meeting agenda. A second public comment period appears later in the agenda at which time public statements will be accepted on any manner or issue that is relevant and germane to county government. Persons who wish to address the board are required to comply with the following. One, state your name for the record. Two, speak only to the chairperson. Three, stand behind the podium when speaking. Four, limit comments to three minutes or fewer. And five, follow the direction of the chairperson when speaking. Board rules do not impose restrictions on subject matter. However, failure to follow the direction of the chairperson will result in not being able to talk or being removed from the meeting. The board chairperson reserves the right to sound the gavel when the audience applauds or derides a speaker. On behalf of the board of commissioners, we thank you in advance for your compliance with these rules. Is there any public comment in the room? Any public comment on the phone? Any public comment? So we are going to move on to correspondence. Item five, we did receive correspondence from Grand Traverse County related to vaccine awareness, here on Pines related to the Rifle River outlet drain, and Ingham County related to health officers. Those have been received and filed. Item six, action on the consent calendar. Um, you guys, I just from, from looking at these, I, I was in favor of for the consent calendar item 7D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. Do you guys have any discussion on those? I think we, uh, we. I'd like to go ahead and add on to K. Okay, but that, that was that discussed into in the committee of the whole. Okay. Correct? No, it was not. What's your guys' thoughts on that? 
So I want to read these since those on uh, Zoom do not know, don't have this in front of them. Are you guys okay with that? So item 7D is a resolution to approve an agreement for liability insurance services. This resolution is sponsored by the county administrator. Proposals were solicited from quality firms to provide general liability, commercial cyber and private privacy liability, auto and umbrella insurance coverage by way of formal request of proposals. Diebold Insurance Agency submitted a responsive proposal for property and casualty insurance effective from October 1, 2021 through September 30th, 2024 at a total annual cost not to exceed $218,708 in the first year. This amount compares to $185,587 for fiscal year 2021. Item 7E is a resolution to accept firewall replacement quote. This resolution is sponsored by the Informational Tech Technology Director the firewall installed to protect data stored on the county's information technology network is scheduled to be replaced. CDW-G LLC provided the most responsive quote to meet the firewall needs of Ogama County through primary and secondary firewall products at a cost not to exceed $10,219.49 over five years. Item 7F is resolution to approve the treasurer's office accounting clerk job description. This resolution is sponsored by the county treasurer. Job descriptions can help identify particular skills or abilities that are necessary for a position or the environmental pressures that apply to the position. A well-written job description establishes a solid set of expectations for employers to meet, communicate to employees by highlighting key duties and responsibilities. A new job description for the treasurer's office accounting clerk is necessary because no job description currently exists. Item 7G, resolution to accept transit tire purchase quote, this resolution is sponsored by the Ogama Transit Director, approve purchase of 78 tires for transit businesses and for return of 33 scrap tires at a total cost not to exceed $8,500. Ogama Transit annually undertakes a bulk purchase of tires for use on vehicles operated by the transit department. Item 7H, resolution to appoint deputy medical examiners. This resolution is sponsored by the medical examiner Section 1A of the County Medical Examiner Act, MCL 52.201A authorizes the Board of Commissioners to appoint Deputy Chief Medical Officers. Chief Medical Examiner Dr. Russell Bush, MD, has formally requested the appointment of Dr. Roshan Mabir, Mabir and Dr. Randy Tashian. Huh? Pardon? Tashian. Tashian, as a deputy medical examiner for Ogama County. Item 7I, resolution to establish a cremation authorization fee. This resolution is sponsored by the medical examiner to establish a fee for cremation services. The Board of Commissioners may direct and provide for the raising of money necessary to defray the current expenses and charges of the county and the necessary charges incident to or arising from the execution of the board lawful authority. The medical examiner determined that a fee of $63 is adequate to offset the cost of processing the cremation authorizations. Item 7J, resolution to approve emergency management coordinator contract. This resolution is sponsored by the county administrator. Mike Bowers Emergency Management Incorporated has provided emergency management coordinator services to Ogma County for many years and has performed satisfactorily. Mike Bowers has agreed to provide emergency management coordinator services for a team of three years, expiring September 30th, 2024, at a total annual cost of $28,000. I'm going to make a motion to approve those I will resolutions. Your we have a motion pardon, with support from Commissioner Subrick to approve resolution item 7D, 7E, 7F. 7G, 7H, 7I, and 7J. Is there any discussion? Like just entered in minutes that uh, these were all vetted during our committee's the whole meeting previous week. Is there any further discussion? Commissioners? Roll call vote. That was a word full. Well, I sort of saved a lot of time. <laughs> Craig Scott. Yes. Mark Serbrook. Yes. Ron Vaughn. Yes. Brad Newbecker. Yes. Benny David. Yes. 
Resolutions approved. So we have 7A, Diane Peltz, Asabo Valley Community Mental Health Authority. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah, so um, our binders here with our information that I'll go over today. And I promise to keep it brief. Thank you for I, coming. I, I, I know that you I was gonna. A, I was gonna request. Agenda. I was gonna request <laughs> ten to fifteen minutes. Is that an adequate time? Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Absolutely. A little bit of tattoo right. there for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, as indicated, my name is Diane Pelz. I am the Chief Executive Officer for Savile Valley Community Mental Health, and I am here today to give you um, a very brief annual report and um, request once again um, your support for for community mental health uh, based on the enabling agreement that we have with uh, your county. Uh, just briefly, I'd like to go through what is in your packet. Um, on the left-hand side is obviously the letter to your chair about coming here to present um, our proposed uh, budget for next year uh, for our revenue, uh, the appropriation request of that, an actual hard copy of our annual report. Um, on the right hand side is my narrative, which I will just briefly go through and point out some highlights. And then you have some documents behind there um, that talk about the mental health system as a whole um, and the threat of privatization that we are currently going through. Um, so you've got some documents there again that will uh, discuss the infographics that are, are behind um, the first one entitled Within Our Reach, and then there's the four infographics behind there. So again, thank you. I appreciate your time. Um, it's, been, it's been a difficult year. Um, of course, we have COVID that we have to deal with that we're still dealing with. I certainly did not uh, anticipate us backsliding um, into different variants, um, as we know that um, everybody's dealing with that right now and how are we going to move forward and, and keep our staff safe, safe keep communities safe, let consumers safe. So we are looking at that. Um, another thing that we struggle with, of course, is um, workforce recruitment. Um, that is a, a national, nationwide um, problem right now. So we certainly um, are in the midst of that. And then we continue with the threat of privatization to the public mental health system. Um, just briefly for our agency, um, we are at a 60 to, to shy of 70% vaccination rate. Um, you know, we, we have not mandated at all. We are starting those conversations, um, but it's difficult, especially with the workforce shortage. We know that, um, just based on the current survey that we finished, we will lose approximately 20% of our staff if we mandate. Um, we cannot afford to do that. We currently have 30 positions that are, are open. We have 194 active full-time staff with 30 open positions. So it's, it's been um, difficult at best. Um, with hospitals mandating for their staff, their contractors, their vendors, um, our emergency services team is required to go in the hospitals to assist with emergency crises. So it essentially, you know, that's a forced mandation on our emergency services team. Um, right now, that team is at a 58% vaccination rate. So we are working on that. It's, it's just been, it's been difficult. It really has. So our board of directors, like you said, we're just starting down the path of this conversation. That's something we... Um, we want to do, um, but it's we're just going to have to kind of see how things how things pan out because we cannot afford to lose twenty percent of our staff. Um, quickly, under service highlights on page two of, of my report, um, I thought this was important to put in here because you can see that even though uh, the pandemic closed a lot of businesses down, we did not close down. We remained open. We provided services. Uh, centers for Medicare and Medicaid services actually changed 
um, how we could obtain reimbursement for some of our services. Um, in the past, um, what was considered an indirect service or calling somebody on the phone to check on them was not reimbursable. They changed that. Um, and it currently still is in effect where we are able to contact somebody, check in on them, make sure that they're doing okay. What do they need? What can we do? Um, so that was opened up to us. Of course, a lot of telehealth visits still in person, face-to-face. -face. If somebody wanted that, they received that. Whatever way that they felt was comfortable for them in order to receive their services, we ensured that happened. Um, so just the data, I mean, you can see here the totals for fiscal year 20 and fiscal year 21. This is approximately 125, give or, give or take a few, um, providing these services. So whether it's in the community, you can see here COVID by the phone or by telehealth, um, you know, that continues to increase and we continue to provide those services. <coughs> We have begun um, a greater level of re-engagement. So more people are coming into the office, um, which is a good thing. But again, the opportunities are open. Everybody selects how they feel the most comfortable to receive their services. Um, this year, 47% um, of, um, of our services were, were in Okemaw County um, for a, a uh, an estimated amount of $9.6 million for those services. Um, the next few pages kind of go into some of the grants that we have. A couple of these I spoke to last year, like the PA2 grant, which is the liquor tax dollars that we have used to put um, a substance use disorder slash mental health professional liaison case manager in the jails, Oklahoma County, Iosco County. Um, and that has actually um, provided, you know, great service. We've had very good outcomes with that. We're going to continue with that. We actually have a presentation coming up next week um, with Wayne State University and a stepping up program for more data with the jail. So we'll see um, how that pans out as well. But you can see for Ogemaw County during the first three quarters of 2021, um, treatment hours were 147. 109 inmates were served, we had seven emergency services, and nine persons were placed in a patient rehab just by having somebody in the jail. Um, I'm going to skip a couple pages here. What I, I do want to discuss with you on the bottom of page five is a grant that we just found out that we were awarded. This is specifically for your county, Oklahoma County. Um, we were awarded just a tad over $285,000 from the Michigan Health Endowment Fund for a two-year grant. Um, we are going to be working cooperatively with the Sterling Area Health Center to provide what we call no wrong door access. So you may have recalled in the past something called a Certified Community Behavioral Health Center. That was actually advanced by De Senator uh, Debbie Stabenow from um, Michigan. Uh, a way to serve more people. In rural Northern Michigan, we are not able to provide, um, or excuse me, we are not able to meet all of the parameters of what a CCBHC is, because there's partnerships with, uh, with tribal entities. There's partnerships with the Veterans Administration. Uh, we don't have a level of providers here. But this grant, which we are entitling No Wrong Door Access, is actually a CCBHC-like program, No Wrong Door Access really is the basic parameter behind a Certified Community Behavioral Health Center. So that means regardless of what, um, what insurance a person has, how mild or severe a person may be with their physical health needs, mental health needs, whatever it is, you come, we will make sure you get to where you need to get to, whether it's our services, the, the FQAC, the Friendly Qualified Health Center. Um, this is an integration of physical health, behavioral health, treating the whole person. So we are, we are extremely um, honored to have received, uh, received this award. I mean, there were, there were hundreds and hundreds of applicants for this. Um, and we were just one of a handful to, to get the grant. So we are um, really looking forward to expanding services here in Oldemont County. So again, two-year grant based on 
uh, the outcomes of this. There's the potential for a third year. Um, if we are able to get the third year, what we would like to do is actually expand it out to Iasco County and Iasco County as well. Um, so all in all, um, with this grant included, well over $1.5 million that we have in grants right now that we are working on uh, no local match, just complete, um, I don't want to say free money, something is free, but it's it's funny that we were you know, certainly not anticipating uh, help that we serve. Um, quickly on future challenges, I, um, I do want to thank you for supporting the resolution against the privatization of the public mental health system. Um, as you may be aware, recall there are two um, there are two bills right now. There's a Senate bill and there's a House bill to privatize the mental health system. Um, Senator Shirky has the first one. Representative Whiteford has the second one. Right now, Senator Shirky's has taken really more of a, of a hold. Um, and this has actually been put on the fast track for trying to get this moved through. Um, you do have some information in your packet about why we need to retain the public mental health system. Privatization of, of our, our system um, is not good for the people that we serve. Um, we will lose local control. We will lose our, our partnership with our counties, with our, um, our local collaborative bodies. Uh, and it's not about, it, it, they, they, this, they talk about integrated health care. You know, integrated health care actually starts, starts within the community. It starts on the ground. And in Michigan, there's 46 CMH as community mental health centers, and there's well over 600 plus integrated health care initiatives in the state already. Um, if you look at overhead, our overhead is like 6%. Uh, a health plan, whether it's a Medicaid health plan, commercial health plan, is, is well over 20%. Um, there's not going to be a cost savings. There's going to be loss of local control. Um, are there things that can be enhanced in our system? Absolutely. Um, you know, we're looking at, again, access to care, just like the grant I spoke to you about. Um, looking at different opportunities to get people into, um, into hospitals, into step-down units, into um, what they're calling uh, treatment rehab facilities, so that it's kind of a, an interim, uh, because not everybody needs that level of care. So um, if I would just uh, ask that if you take a few minutes and read the documents that are on the right side of your folder that will... Um, help inform you, you know, greater. Um, but again, I, I really thank you for your advocacy. And if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to give me a call. Um, secondly, you know, again, the national workforce shortage. That's, that's, that's our second challenge that we're trying to work, work through, trying to be creative. You may have seen some of our billboards out there for job fairs, um, you know, what we need, what we're looking for. You know, last year we had uh, 26 open positions. Like I said, this year we have 30. Um, trying to be as creative as we can, you know, trying to um, entice, you know, our current employees to bring somebody in, you know, we'll, we'll uh, reward you for that. Let the person stay, we'll reward them for that. You know, we have educational assistance, we have student loan reimbursement, um, you know, just we're worried. Quite frankly, once once Meyer opens up, that we're going to see a mass exodus of our staff. Um, you know, go go to Meyer. I mean, I think it's a I think it's a great opportunity for the community. Don't get me wrong, um, but you know, working in human services and, and mental health is difficult. It's difficult. So that thirty it, local jobs. Yes. Yes, um, it's within our catchment. I should say. Okay. So I ask a old man, ask a counties. Um, we got somebody but, that might be interested. Oh, absolutely. Is uh with this grant that you received, is that going to um, improve the biggest roadblock on my end is, is insurance. Insurance. As you guys, is primarily just Medicaid. Uh -huh. So with this grant and, and partnering with um, Sterling, sure. are you guys, is there any widening of that? Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the, the way that a federally qualified health center is reimbursed is completely different from what's with mental health. So yes, that, 
the expanse of that is going to be opened up as well. Um, so that is that is um, a really good um, outcome. Very there. much so. Yes, yes, very, very much so. Um, and there's the, the other COVID-19 grant that we received last year that is continuing. Anybody who has been affected, um, whatever it may be, because of the pandemic, that is opened up as well, regardless of insurance. So um, if you go through and read the report, you can see we've helped um, several healthcare professionals and, and first responders. I, I think that's you know a place where we kind of forget um, where there's a lot of um, impact, um, positive and negative. You know, people who work in, in healthcare outside of mental health, um, seeing you know what they see. So. We make sure we reach out to them, and again, regardless of insurance, we, we cover that. So it's been a tough year for many. It certainly has. Thank you. So you're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, anything else comes up? Do you have any questions? You have my card. Feel free to, you know. You thank ask. you very much. You're welcome, and thank you. Thank you again for your support. We greatly appreciate it. Item 7B, resolution to accept a proposal for inmate health care services. This resolution is sponsored by the County Sheriff, Michigan Department of Corrections Policy Directive 03.04.100 requires that prisoners shall be provided with a continuum of medically necessary health care services that are supported by the evidence-based medical research. This, the current contract with Correctional Healthcare Companies Incorporated to provide inmate health care service will expire on September 30th. The county administrator solicited and received proposals for inmate healthcare services. Tina M. Hemud submitted the most responsive and responsible proposal for inmate healthcare services at an annual cost of $119,540 with an option for additional nursing staff services and an annual cost of $39,520. Is there any update on Greg? Is there any update on that? We're good with that, correct? Muted at the moment. Greg? But nobody, oh, there you go. Nobody would unmute me. I'm so sorry. Or I couldn't unmute myself. I apologize. Can you restate that, please, so I can answer it appropriately? Um, you've had a, a, an opportunity to review the contract. We're, we're I have. This. And so here are the problems with the lease as it uh, stands. No, not uh, that. Greg, 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 hold on. We're on resolution to accept a proposal for inmate health care services. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I am fine with it. I reviewed it. I, there are no changes that I saw that was necessary to comply with the law. Thank you for the correction. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept that resolution. So okay. didn't, we, didn't we table that? Don't we need to take it off the table? I believe we tabled that resolution. We tabled it, yes. That needs I to would be. make a motion that it be removed from the table. Or we have a motion to, to remove that uh, resolution uh, from the table. Why am I off here? 7B. Just a page. I'm sorry. To accept proposal for inmate health care services. We have a motion with Mr. Sturbrook with support from Commissioner Newbecker. Any discussion on that? Can we get a roll call vote on that? That's to remove it, right? To remove it from the table. <clears throat> Mark Serbrook? Yes. Ron Vaughn? Yes. Brad Newbecker? Yes. Jenny David? Yes. Craig Scott? Yes. Motion approved. Now I'll make the motion to approve resolution to accept a proposal for inmate health care services. Second. We have a motion with support from Commissioner Vaughn to approve resolution to accept a proposal for inmate health care services. Is there any discussion? This is, is an that, Does that include the option? Yes. I would like it to include the yes. option. I know the option is there. Uh, so I, would hours, like, I believe it is, yes. I would like I think that to make sure that the, I think that was discussed in it's in the resolution. In the, and, include it. and this right. is an annual but it says the option. I want to include that option. So this is an annual contract, correct? No, three years. Three years. So that should be in there as well. Did I miss we, that? We only asked for a three-year proposal. So that's any proposal on the table is a three-year proposal. Okay, I want to make sure that's clear as well then. We did discuss that. You're... Okay, so can we put that in there as well though? Is that necessary? I'll um, uh, uh, add a therefore that okay. demonstrates that's for the three years, yes. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Han Vaughn? Yes. 
Brandenbecker? Yes. Jenny David? Yes. Craig Scott? Yes. Mark Serbrook? Yes. Item 7C, resolution to extend a lease agreement. This resolution is sponsored by the County Administrator. On September 29th, 2017, the Ogemaw County Board of Commissioners entered into a lease agreement with Leasey Showroom Auto Detailing LLC for the use of lots four and nine of block one of the plat of RH Weedman and Company's addition to the village, now city of West Branch. The agreement allows the lease use of the above described county owned property for the purpose of parking and or short term storage of vehicles awaiting services by lease as well as ingress and what is that word? Egress. Egress. Egresses. Okay. Discussion. Uh, Greg had something he wanted to add on that, correct? I do. Um, there are a couple of issues I wanted to raise. One of them was raised by Mm -hmm. um, your administrator, and that is that under the law, a municipality cannot provide a property that is owned by the citizens uh, free uh, without some benefit coming back from uh, the lessee. And so the question that I wanted to ask is, is there a benefit that we are getting as a, um, a, a county uh, in allowing that use uh, of that property? And if there isn't a benefit, then we need to have a nominal amount in the lease. Number two, uh, the um, liability issue is huge because we are uh, outside of the normal uh, municipality type of work. Uh, governmental immunity would not apply to any uh, accident, incident, or injury that it would occur on that property. In fact, it would destroy the immunity. I noticed that there was some uh, requirement for insurance uh, of up to a million dollars, but that is far less than what it should be. That number should be somewhere around uh, $5 million uh, that we would require them to have insurance simply because, again, we don't have the uh, governmental immunity defense. And more importantly, and I don't mean this uh, in a negative or pejorative manner, but the indemnification in the lease uh, and this supports why we would need 5 million insurance. The indemnification in the lease uh, provides that they will indemnify us and hold us harmless if there's any incident that occurs uh, at the site that could give rise to a lawsuit. However, the indemnification is only as good as the ability of the person on the other side to fulfill it. Now, I know we're talking about a, a good business that is strong and doing well, but from a perspective of if something ever changed that put that business at risk, that indemnification would have no value to us. Uh, and therefore, um, I would suggest that the lease be modified to include a nominal amount of money um, or uh, articulate in the lease the benefit that we're getting as a result of providing that property to them. And number two is that we increase the amount of insurance required to $5 million. Subject to those things, uh, I am good. So as property owned by municipalities for public purposes is typically exempt from taxes. If such property is leased for a profit business for a non-public purposes, however, such exemption does not apply. Did he mention it? I didn't. No, let's uh, take him right from the statute. You see the citation in there. Um, what I'm going to suggest is that we would add language if it's not sufficient already in the lease, that if there are any taxes owed as a result of the business operating on that property, that the lessee would be responsible for those taxes. Um, there is a school of thought, and just the research I've done, is that suggests that this property, once leased, uh, would be uh, or should be placed on the tax roll. I'm no expert in that arena whatsoever, but if that's the case, then we would want the lessee to do that as well. Exactly, that's what I meant when I indicated it was a proprietary function that we're engaging in that is outside of the normal realm of a municipality. And so um, we're going to need uh, those taxes paid. We're going to need the insurance kicked up uh, because we're going to lose all of the uh, uh, umbrella that is governed uh, to any municipality. It's nothing we can't do. It's just something that we need to move forward. And putting it on the tax roll is important also. 
So I'm going to make a motion to table this, and I think it needs to be on the committee of the whole. There needs to be much more discussion about this. Uh, I'll support your motion to table. Commissioner Sherbrooke and I are um, need to schedule a date with the uh, property owner anyway to talk about that other property and maybe we can go over a lot of this at the same time. Some of it involves one of those parcels that, exactly. that we're talking about. So uh, I think we can be efficient and address both things at the same time. Is Denise going to be a part of that meeting as well? But she would be if, if we I mean, wanted to. I know you were going to ask her some questions as far as if that parcel can be split. And oh, right. Yeah. Uh, Kim, could you make sure, though, you at least between now and whenever we take action, that you get a copy of the insurance policy that they have uh, for or on the property and make sure that includes um, uh, Ogama County as an additional insured? Because I would hate for something to happen between now and when we finally figure out the direction we want to go and we figure out the nominal amount and all of the other things we talked about today. If an accident or an incident or a trip and fall were to occur, I would not want us to be in a scenario where we're not covered appropriately. So if you could get a hold of that policy when you talk with the um, uh, person who's leasing it and maybe share it with me and we can ensure that we are an additional insured and ensure that the million dollars is in place, uh, then you know maybe we can take that risk between now and when we have the committee of the whole. So we have a motion from, uh, I made that motion with support from Commissioner Sorbrook to table uh, the resolution to extend release agreement. Is there any further discussion? Can we get a roll call vote on that? Brad Newbecker? Yes. Jenny David? Yes. yes. <clears throat> Craig Scott, Mark Sorbrook? Yes. Ron Vaughn? Yes. And that'll be on the agenda, correct? Sure. Item 7K, resolution to authorize legal representation in mailing Mellencrod bankruptcy proceedings. This resolution is sponsored by the county administrator. Ogemaw County has retained the services of Whites and Luxembourg PC to investigate and pursue as appropriate the county's claims against manufacturers and our wholesale distri distributors of controlled substances in Ogemaw County. The law firm notified the county that Mellencrod Pharmaceuticals, a manufacturer of specialty pharmaceuticals, and defendant in ongoing opiate abuse litigations has filed for bankruptcy. Approval of this resolution would authorize Whites and Luxembourg PC to submit a vote on behalf of Ogama County in the Mallinckrodt bankruptcy proceedings. Tim, do you wanna take this? This law firm is actually representing a number of counties across Michigan. And I wasn't here yet when, uh, when Ogama engaged, but it probably was the standard uh, presentation. Uh, what's happening is, is uh, a number of these um, Pharmaceutical firms are stepping up to the plate. They're filing for bankruptcy. In this case, what the firm is asking is a resolution from the board saying it's okay to vote on your behalf uh, on whatever this bankruptcy uh, uh, proceeding brings forward. Uh, it's fairly routine, but they didn't need that documented. So that's why it was added to your agenda here. Uh, they uh, actually worked through LaDonna to get this to me. I think uh, it's uh, it just sounds like a very routine thing, but uh, something formally they need in order to make that vote. Any questions? I make a motion to adopt the resolution as presented. I'll support. Motion from Commissioner Sirbrick with support from Commissioner Scott. I'm going to abstain uh, from voting on this due to my professional career. Any further discussion? Uh, okay. I think we were all here, maybe uh, other than Mark, when mm -hmm. when the attorneys came here and everything. Right. Yep. Yeah, and it was all recommended by the prosecutor Correct. to go ahead and follow it. Yeah. Roll call vote. Craig Scott. Yes. Mark Serbrook. Yes. Ron Vaughn. Yes. Brad Newbecker. Yes. Jenny David Epstein. Item 7L, resolution to authorize a procurement card for parks and recreational purposes. This resolution is sponsored by the Parks and Recreational Commission to authorize a procurement card for parks and recreational purposes. The commercial credit card provider requires that all procurement card holders shall be employees of the county, but park managers act as independent contractors. As procurement card issued in the name 
of a county commissioner appointed to the Park and Recreational Commission satisfies the requirements of the card provider. As stated in this resolution, the card will be held by the county treasurer and or county administrator until needed. Do you have anything to add to that? It's um, kind of a workaround. We, we need to comply with the rules, obviously, of the credit card provider. Uh, there definitely is without question uh, you know, purchases where this could be, I, I think, made much more efficient for the parks. Uh, having the county commissioner name on that card is just an added check and balance to make sure we all know that it's a legitimate purpose and the commissioner does not have to carry the card. We will hold it here uh, and just uh, you know, let us know when, when uh, purchase is authorized and we can get it done here. Is it going to be Commissioner Scott and Commissioner Vaughn? They're both on the he's, the he's the chair. It's whatever. It, okay. Uh, well, it, it Ron. I thought. Yeah, I, I, I'll be we more like Ron was, my name on it. Ron's closer to the park operation. Right. Than I am. Right. So Craig generally works with the Deer Refuge more than yeah. in the so or down the it, park. It'll so. be probably used primarily for the RV park yeah. rather than the. The nature part, correct. But the discussion was to put put Ron on it. So, so it's going to be in the name of Ron. I, yeah. And you'll need to talk to the inside I would, yeah, that's right. make the motion today, tomorrow, <laughs> to adapt the resolution as presented with the card to be issued to Commissioner Vaughn. I'll second. We have a motion from Commissioner Sirick with support from Commissioner Scott um, to approve. Resolution to authorize a procurement card for parks and recreational purposes. Is there any further discussion? Roll call vote. Mark Serbrook. Yes. Ron Vaughn. Yes. Brad Newbecker. Yes. Jenny David. Yes. Frank Scott. Yes. Item 7M, resolution to authorize a grant agreement with the Michigan Indigent Defense Commission. This resolution is sponsored by the county administrator, the Michigan Indigent Defense Commission, approved by the Ogma County Compliance Plan and Cost Analysis to provide indigent defense and related services at the 34th Judicial Circuit Court and the 86th Judicial District Court. The grant, the grant period is concurrent with 2022 county fiscal year. The budget is approved for an amount of up to $614,603.90, including a local share of $146,403. This compares to fiscal year 2021 in the amount of $460,388, including a local share of $147,705. Make a point that we adapt the resolution as presented. Local share is less this year. That's a good thing. Our share is less, the state share is considerably more. Considerably more. more. I'll support. <laughs> We have a motion from Commissioner Surik with support from Commissioner Scott to approve the resolution to authorize a grant agreement with the Michigan Indigent Defense Commission. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Ron Vaughn. Yes. Brad Newbecker. Yes. Benny David. Yes. Greg Scott. Yes. Mark Serbert. Yes. Uh, next, we have claims, correct? I didn't miss anything, right? Okay. So claims this here totaled. $133,956.02. I had the opportunity to review claims and I would make a motion that we pay the bills now of $133,956.02. I'll second that. Is there anything that stuck out? Can you guys tell us a little bit about <laughs> bills? <laughs> Indigent <laughs> Council. Indigent Council was big again, as usual. It was like what 50? 50,680 dollars. Yep. Anything else, guys? Yeah. Um, what what do we purchase from Hero Industries for the K9 supplies? It's twelve twelve hundred vest and oh for K9 for the dog? Yeah. Vest oh, and what else? Vest. Dog's got a bulletproof vest. Wow. Dog needs a dog wow. needs a vest. Fifteen hundred and twelve hundred bucks. That was other. There was it was a package. Um, it was the vest and I don't remember all the bone. <laughs> no, I don't think it was a bone. Dog bites. <laughs> you don't recall? It was it was a package deal. It was the vest and there was like five items on there with the vest and the. Yeah, I made the heart, but there were the 
the name tag things that went on the vest. And I'm trying to remember. <clears throat> it was also the quarter to pay the medical examiner of $17,500. So that was on there as well. That was quarterly. Yeah. What was the um, uh, $3,300 that was declined on the credit card? That was, pardon me, I can't hear you. $3,300 on the credit card was uh, rejected? Or was that prepaid? Prepaid. Oh, the credit, yeah, I see that. Any other questions? I think we have a motion. Did you make a motion, Commissioner? Yes, with support from Commissioner Vaughn. Any further discussion? Can we get a roll call vote? Brad Newbecker? Yes. Jenny David? Yes. Craig Scott? Yes. Mark Serbra? Yes. Ron Vaughn? Yes. Claims are <clears throat> approved. Eight unfinished business. I don't believe there is any, correct, Tim? Right. Item nine, administrator's report. Okay, let's start off with the let the board know about a meeting that we're holding tomorrow and I know at least two of you already know about it because you'll be there uh, we will be meeting with the representative from mesa that's the health insurance group that uh, ensures most of the teachers and educators throughout the state about a year or two ago mesa opened up their program to municipalities uh, we were made aware of that and uh, we're um, approached with a possible opportunity of providing health insurance through that group and gaining the economic benefits of over 2,000 uh, members in their pool already. Uh, what we have done for tomorrow is set up an invitation-only meeting. Commissioners Craig and Serbrook uh, invited to attend as our negotiating team, as well as representatives from all of our uh, collective bargaining units and our elected officials and uh, uh, representation from our non-union to just listen to the representative from Mesa and the proposal he's put together. What he's done is model the plan after the Teamster plan that we have and believes that Mesa can provide it at uh, a decent cost savings to the county and to the employees. So this is an opportunity to take a first glance at it, uh, discuss it uh, among our group, and if it receives a favorable response, it will end up on the committee, the whole meeting next Thursday. We will ask the Mesa rep to attend that meeting as well to make a presentation to the board. Now, why are we moving so quickly on this? Well, primarily because the time is up for us to decide where we wanna go with health insurance coverage uh, for the next year. So we have to make our commitment. If we do end up changing carriers, we'll need to schedule an open enrollment period. Mesa would actually, station one of their employees here to meet with our employees one-on-one -on -one to answer any questions they would have at that time. But I wanna to get too far ahead of ourselves. I wanna get through tomorrow's meeting first and then to the committee of the whole meeting next week. Um, part of what we've uh, bargained with one of our units, in fact, the uh, contract that was just approved with the steel workers is the concept that this type of committee would end up being more permanent. So any group of employees who's represented or who who's on a program like this, would meet uh, at least once a year to go over the program, go over the cost, go over the uh, concept of 80-20 versus the hard cap uh, model uh, and uh, make a recommendation uh, as a whole to the board as to what direction to go with health insurance that particular year. The other thing this does, so when we get to bargaining three years from now, if we have all of our groups involved, this is one issue we don't have to bargain over because we will have already resolved it uh, internally. So again, this is something that I've mentioned before that uh, we were, I thought, years away from. This opportunity kind of fell on our lap unexpectedly. Uh, and I'm uh, happy to say so far anyway, we've been nimble enough to respond to it and uh, we'll be hopefully making a proposal to the board here within the coming weeks. So that, uh, again, tomorrow's meeting is an invitation only. Uh, so any of the employees who are listening, there would be opportunity if we proceed uh, later on to have uh, larger meetings with all our employees represented and allow employees to actually meet one-on-one -on -one to talk about any individual health insurance concerns that they might have. That takes us as the employer out of the equation and hopefully employees would then be more comfortable even you know, talking more in depth with uh, 
uh, carrier about their concerns. Now, speaking of uh, negotiations, we have now at least informally engaged with all of our units. Uh, we are active with uh, three contracts right now. Of course, we ratified one a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that left the one unit, our corrections unit. We have a tentative date set right now for September 24th. Uh, this could become problematic for us. Uh, we'll wait to see after the 24th uh, whether or not it is. Now, we've uh, already asked you to reserve the 30th uh, as a date for a potential special meeting. Uh, that would be particularly important if we were to come to a tentative agreement with this group uh, to try to get that ratified before the current contract expires on September 30th. If we don't reach tentative agreement, um, I will be talking to you at a committee of the whole meeting about what that means uh, moving forward for that group. Uh, we did have a meeting, um, I guess it was, it might have been last week, I'm not sure, uh, with representatives from BSNA about the electronic time card option. Uh, this was very exciting uh, for us because it's a program that will allow employees to uh, really create their time card on their desktops. And that information would then go to the department head for approval and then head right to the payroll and distribute as needed all uh, the, the necessary payout, whether that's for vacation times, for regular hours, for overtime hours, we just automatically calculate that. And uh, as good as that is, um, the SNA suggested that through a third party vendor, it could be made even better. Uh, their software at BSA is just a little bit limited in terms of what you can do as far as breaking out the costs. We do have uh, employees, uh, particularly when we start getting into uh, areas like core prosecuting attorney with the cooperative reimbursement program where employees have to break out their hours because they worked on this grant for this many hours and then they work regular hours, this many hours. Uh, the BSNA product isn't so uh, flexible that it can break it down to some of that level of detail but they do have a third party vendor that they suggest uh, we check uh, because they will do it and their software integrates perfectly with BSNA. So we get the best of all worlds and it literally at that point becomes a time clock for our employees as well. So one, you know, one more piece of equipment being eliminated, I guess. But the automation part of this is what was most exciting to us. So we've arranged a meeting uh, about a week from now with this third party vendor. Uh, we'll be back, I'm sure, to community the whole meeting probably later in the fall. Uh, with a proposal and hopefully a demo so you can see how this thing works. But I see Karen shaking her head. I'm it's sorry, very sorry. labor we, intensive we, what so we do right now. And this we, will eliminate a lot of that. So We're looking at um, initiating this with, with all departments, correct? Yes. Okay. The organization wide. Uh, and again, the, the integration with the BSNA system, uh, I don't think we could be in a better position. So we'll take a look at it. We'll take a look at the cost and determine, uh, you know, bring that to the board and you'll have an opportunity to determine whether we want to proceed. At the same time, we also looked at uh, an asset management package that BSNA has. Uh, we uh, remember with commissioners Craig and Newbecker, we looked at a system, gosh, it might've been a year ago now, uh, that was very complex. And I think if we were a road commission that that might be a, a program that we'd want to look into. But for us, maybe more complex than we needed, the BSNA product again looks like it's uh, right in our wheelhouse so we'll probably bring a proposal uh, fairly soon on that as well the nice thing that it does from uh, an asset management standpoint is we can at a glance look at that and know where all the laptops are know where all of our equipment happens to be we can uh, fine-tune this down to you know, whatever level we like we don't want to get too uh, crazy with it we don't want to tag our pencils for instance but or at least the items that have uh, you know greater value to it we'll have a, I think, much better way to track that. And then there are some things that we do, like vehicles, for instance, where there's depreciation and this program will uh, do that calculation for us as well. That's particularly important at audit time when we start looking at our assets and liabilities. So that was the system for tracking all county assets? Yes. Not the GPS system? That's not a GPS. Okay. That's, yeah, right, that's, yeah. Uh, Lastly, just uh, follow up on our conversation last week at Committee of the Whole. Uh, I do have the financial statements for the organizations that, that are affiliated with us that uh, use millage dollars. So you'll see an analysis of where we are with terms of the millages that we collect versus and we'll look at the agencies and look at the fund balances they have. Spoiler alert, they're not very high. 
uh, we'll look at that so that when it comes time to set the millages, and we'll be talking about that more next week, uh, you'll have confidence in knowing that whatever rate you set is what's needed, not too much, not too little. So, but I do have all that data, and we'll have all that prepared for you, and hopefully in a nice single sheet that you can look at. That was for all the millages. Yes, all millages. You have not sent that yet, correct? Not yet. Okay. So that's on committee of the whole next week. Right. Perfect. Anything else? Nope. Item 10, elected officials and department head reports. Clerk. Uh, Brett Gildner, Ogemaw County Clerk. Um, the only thing I have to report this week is that the additional hours where the two staff were up to 40 hours that ended last pay period. So everybody is back down to normal 35 hours a week. And that's it. Treasurer? Karen Kalowski, Oklahoma County Treasurer. Um, I, my report this week is to tell you that we had our annual foreclosure tax sale public auction that was held on September 1st. It was very successful. I had 36 parcels that went to sale, only nine of them that did not sell. Um, those will be followed up at a um, later date set by title check to have an additional auction to move with no minimum bid to sell those remaining nine months. You had that land bank meeting, correct? That a while back. The two parcels that um, have the blight issues in Mills Township, I removed from the sale. I'm waiting to hear back from the blight officer. My suggestion was that um, this be a joint effort cleanup for our community between um, the township, the county, and perhaps the land bank. I've since learned that you know, my funds in the land bank are limited because we've just launched this program, uh, reestablished the program. But I can utilize funds from previous um, public land auction sales I can use for blight cleanup. So I do have a couple of options of resources to help with the cleanup, but I suggested to the blight officer in Mills Township, this needs to be a joint effort from all entities for the community cleanup, not just the county paying for it. I'm waiting to hear back from the blight officer at this time. Were they present at the meeting? Um, well, I was absent because I had my surgery. Okay. So I did not get to attend the meeting which I'm really upset about because I had a couple of really good professional land bank people there and I missed all that information firsthand. Um, I believe that Lance, the um, flight officer, was at the meeting um, with land bank, but I was unable to attend. Um, any other, did you want to give an update at all, Mike, on the SMART 901 quickly? I know uh, this isn't- Really quickly, uh, uh, the only update I have is to encourage people to uh, to register for our new public alerting program. How does uh, one go about doing that, Mike? If you go to your cell phone. <coughs> Come on up, sir. I'm much better to stand up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, if you go on your smartphone and you download the app, Smart 911, that was right. and then follow the prompts and register, uh, and then uh, open your phone up to accept uh, wireless emergency alerts. Uh, and the phone will prompt you if that's not already done on your phone and your phone will explain to you how to open that up for you. And then you will be able to register for what types of alerts you want to receive, for what locations. Uh, the options are Harinac, Ogama, Oscoda, Iosco, and Alcona counties. Uh, currently, the other options are for emergency weather alerts or non-emergency weather alerts. Um, and uh, uh, the Ogma County 911 uh, Authority is uh, working on putting uh, their alerts on, and those will be primarily not emergency alerts. Things like uh, road closures or you know, shelter in place or uh, uh, other things like that, uh, evacuations. Um, so uh, currently we did, just did a test this morning we raised 23,000 people with the program this morning. Awesome. Um, uh, of a total of 72,000 people uh, possible. Uh, so we've gotten a really good start. This has been active for about two weeks now. Uh, and we hope to double that in the next couple of months. It's the cautionary tale. 
<laughs> and, uh, when you sign up, you do have the option of going with a text message, with a phone call, or even an email. Oh, yes, I, I forgot that. Uh, if you, you do open it up, phone calls, your phone will ring at 3.45 a.m. to let you know the thunderstorms. Just, yes. You open yes, your phone twice. will ring, your text message will be, and, and your email will be if you choose those options. But you have the option to choose which ways you want to receive it. So Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the sheriff's department's not here. Did you have any update or anything? Okay, no. I wasn't sure if they reached out to you. I was. Can you ask them? Um, we had notification that the the individual they were planning on for the resource officer has resigned. Is that going to be an issue with him fulfilling that contract with the school? I was told that uh, Officer Gilbert uh, is in the schools. I just want to verify with them that they're not that as far as that contract, he's going to be able to fulfill that. Okay. Last I heard, he was. I was going to ask today, but yeah, he was. He was filling the position in the school. Are there any other elected officials? Oh, I'm not elected. Uh, any on the phone, elected officials? I see Jeff on the phone. He's on elected. Well, that's why he's staying. Jeff. Yeah, this is Eric David with the Ogemaw County Veterans <laughs> Office. Jeff is in with a client at the moment. He has nothing new to report. Okay. At this point in time, is there any other elected officials and department head reports? Did you want to come yes. on up? I apologize for that. No, no, that's okay. Just say, just, say your name and where you're from. I'm Julie Darden. Uh, I work for MSU Extension. I'm the district interim district director for District 4, which includes Oklahoma County. And um, I sat down because I'm not elected. <laughs> I apologize. I, got, like, I was like, oh. I'm, but now you know I'm listening carefully. Um, and that's what I identified. So, um, I'm really excited to uh, come today to talk to you about uh, our new employee who will be starting next week. Uh, her name is Enya DeFighter, and she is going to be our new 4-H program coordinator. And I will bring her to the committee on the whole if she's available. Um, if not, uh, I'll find another time very soon when I can bring her and introduce her. Um, Enya is a Michigan native, but she's relocating from South Florida. So um, to take this job, and we were very excited that she was she was our first choice, and um, she was uh, eager to accept the position. So um, she, like I said, she's relocating, um, and she will be starting um, on the twentieth in the office. Uh, so we have been working to get ready for her. Um, I also. Uh, wanted to update you that uh, our schedule for being in the office has been updated and Colleen made sure that there was an, uh, a blurb in the Herald about our office hours. So we're open 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Thursday. Um, and that coincides with uh, Colleen's schedule, essentially. Um, and uh, Colleen alerted me because I had to be in another county during the Committee of the Whole that um, you're doing a general review of village updates, and I understand that that will be a topic at the Committee of the Whole, but I thought it might be helpful to just share some information that might illuminate um, why we have unspent funds. <laughs> um, so firstly, uh, we anticipate there'll be another uh, quarterly payment uh, to Michigan State uh, for uh, extension support uh, that, that comes from the village. Um, I will admit that there, <laughs> without a support staff person, there was a lag in uh, bookkeeping, and, and, and I take responsibility for that. Um, honestly, I don't know how to use the SNA, which is why Colleen is so valuable to our office, um, and we're still working to get set up uh, to process claims through the SNA. Um, we're working with Tom to figure out the technology uh, for that, essentially, because we operate on MSU servers, but we need access to the county servers just for that piece. So that's unpro in process and we're working through that. So I apologize to Karen that I did have an un, uh, un I didn't process the claim for rental. So we'll be keeping up with that um, on a more regular basis. Um, we've also identified some purchases that we need to make for the office now that we're in offices uh, working as opposed to working remotely, one of which is a copier. Uh, that we're working to purchase through my deal. Um, unfortunately, the copier that we identified to purchase is not available. So we're, <laughs> we've identified another purchase through my deal copier that we, were, we are pursuing. 
Um, so a little glitch and delay in that process. Um, and then because Colleen's there and she's working more regularly, there's some other um, items that we'll be working to purchase. Um, and I just thought it might be helpful just to share that information. Um, and um, excited to hear about some of the cost saving measures that the county is pursuing in terms of um, payment for uh, benefits. I think that will help our department surely uh, afford the cost of Colleen services to a greater extent. Um, and uh, we're so excited. We honestly are very excited to do that. Um, and, and she has been very helpful already. And her desire to organize things matches with my desire to not organize things very well. Um, <laughs> it's just not my strength. Um, so um, we had a, I know that you're aware that the fair was successful. Uh, we, we, uh, we look forward to uh, 2022 fair where we have more robust presence of staff, although we certainly had a robust presence of volunteers at the fair um, and we'll continue to do that. Um, the enrollment period for 4-H uh, youth begins in the middle of the month um, after the 15th. Um, this is typically the fall is when kids enroll in 4-H and we are very happy. I don't know, I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but in this year, uh, youth will not be charged a participation fee, a flat fee for the year to participate in 4-H. Um, that was a decision that was made by MSU Extension to, re to just eliminate that fee across the board statewide. There may be fees for things like camps or special opportunities, but in general, the, the participation fee, which was $20 a year, has been eliminated. So um, that makes this pr our programs and opportunities for youth much more accessible um, for, you know, and, and available widely. And um, we're excited to have Enya's uh, enthusiasm and creativity engaging youth and adult volunteers in, in our strong 4-H program here in Oklahoma County. So thank you. Happy to answer any questions if you have any, and I will make sure I can come to the committee on the whole meeting. Thanks thank so you. Much. Thank you. Any other elected officials and department heads on the phone? Item 11, matters from the floor. I don't believe that there are any. Item 12, motions for adoption. Item 13, committee reports. Commissioner Vaughn. Um, first of all, uh, we were at, uh, Craig and I were at Parks and Rec. Um, we're uh, rebidding for the sewer lines. Um, hopefully we get some bids in and we can uh, move forward with that uh, right after the park closes on um, the end of October. Um, and then um, the price will be under the 50,000 amount so that we can, uh, next spring, we can get uh, companies, local companies to come in and put our uh, um, sites in for uh, ADAs, the cement, stuff like that. So we can get local, local companies to do that. Uh, community corrections, met with them. There was a kind of a snafu. Um, there was six classes met um, through community corrections during the, the MIR trial. Um, there's a laptop that they thought was designated over the over the jail or the classes. And apparently they had to let Mr. Muir use a laptop for his defense or something. So they didn't have they didn't have it and uh, missed six classes. Um, with that, the state has said, if you miss any more classes, um, they're gonna pull the funding. So I talked to Tom about getting a designated laptop from the county so that that doesn't happen again. Um, probably never have another trial like that, but you don't know. So he was gonna take care of that, yeah. Uh, 911, uh, met with them. Uh, their only question, maybe Tim can answer this, where's the ceiling roof? Um, are they doing anything with that? Where's will, that? Yeah, back to that after the budget's done. After the budget, okay. <laughs> we, we do Go have a, a settlement check that came from the insurance uh, company, reported on that a few weeks ago. Uh, we are uh, still working with them because we think there are more items they should cover. 
And of course, um, Kevin Elliott, don't Ray Diebold is uh, acting as, you know, on our behalf to, right. to make sure that happens too. So after that, it's a matter then of getting it out. Now, obviously, uh, I think we had one quote already through the insurance company. So we'll want to make sure that that's modified to fit whatever it is we need to do. Okay. Because that check was substantially under the estimate, correct? It was considerably under, yes. Like only 10% of the estimate. Yeah. Is that something we definitely need fixed before yes. it gets any we, colder? Well, I mean, we could probably get away with even into you know November, maybe even early December. But after that, if we get into some freeze thaw situations, that's that's the area that concerns us. So we're going to try to at least get the insulation taken care of and that ceiling component. Going to run into uh, the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or we will face the same fate, which maybe another insurance claim, right? No, we don't do that. <laughs> get it fixed. <laughs> Commissioner Newbecker. I don't have anything to report that this month. <clears throat> Lots of uh, interest in the drainage uh, issue. So, Mr. Sirwick, I attended uh, West Branch Township yesterday. They have an opening on the uh, township DDA. So, if anybody's interested, if they live within the West Branch Township Downtown Development Authority or have an interest uh, business, they have a vacancy. And they are actively looking to put somebody on the board. Other than that, is it? Commissioner Scott? Um, I'm part of the negotiation team, Commissioner Duke, uh, Commissioner Serbrook, and uh, whoever that guy is next to me. Yeah, Mark, Commissioner Mark, and uh, and of course the administrator, and it's going well. And I would like to say that it's going much, much better than three years ago having the administrator uh, involved. Uh, we do have one ratified contract and we're headed to our, towards the finish of the others. Uh, Parks and Rec, as Commissioner Vaughn talked about, uh, uh, like to report that we've had a good year at both parks. We are ahead of budget. So the, the, uh, the county, uh, the taxpayer is not going to put, put any bill for, for this year. Um, <clears throat> And then we're also uh, approved some shower, uh, some repairs to our shower building this winter after the park closes. So uh, my township meetings are all next week, uh, and then other meetings also. So uh, I'll have more to report the next week. Um, I was not able to attend the fair board meeting uh, due to a sporting event, but their concert uh, is rescheduled for nine seventeen. So. Um, just so everybody knows, that's that John Michael Montgomery uh, concert. And I know they're looking still to uh, sell tickets and that's online, you can access those. So that's homecoming, unfortunately, but uh, it is what it is. I know, I know it's Friday. So uh, Logan Township, I did attend that um, after a very long drawn out process. They did come to an agreement on the uh, trash, which was refreshing to see. Um, they are giving the residents of the township an option to either opt in or opt out. Um, and they have to get, in order for the agency to agree to the cost, um, which is either $16 or $16.50 um, per month for garbage pickup, um, they have to have so many residents that do agree to this. I want to say it's one seventy dollars something, but I, I don't, quote, don't quote me on that. Um, so in, anyways, that was nice to see. That is something that uh, they're also still at a stalemate with the road commission. Um, they had sent out some requests for some upgrades um, and due to them declining to pay for that uh, uh, culvert there on uh, Stalbush Road. Um, the road commission is, they're maintaining the roads, but they are refusing any improvements um, until they pay that uh, bill. So, and they have a road millage too road improvements but anyways um it was nice seeing that board uh, finally come together that was quite a long drawn out process uh richland township i attempted that all right attended that uh both townships are also discussing the, the right river outlet that's a huge discussion of course um richland their campground um did very well this past summer they are they have a few rustic spots that they just approved uh monday night to upgrade to uh electric um, which they're pretty excited about. Um, they're closing October 10th 
Um, the end of September, they have a Halloween weekend and their electric is already full um, uh, for that weekend. Um, Mills Township, I, I went there and there was no meeting, so I don't know and I don't social meet. Pardon me? It's next week. Oh, so I was a week early. I tried. <laughs> um, it's the <laughs> second Tuesday and Tuesday was a, this, no. I don't know. Wednesday, Anyways, first day of the month. I assumed it was my fault. Either the power, I don't know. Anyways, I did that. So I'll be there next Tuesday. And, and thanks for that update because I'm sure that's going to be brought up. And I like to hear our version going in. So I'll probably touch base with you if you don't mind between now and next Tuesday. Um, and I think that's all I have. Uh, item 14, general public comment. This is a second of two opportunities for public comment. On December 10th, 2020, the Board of Commissioners approved Resolution 20-77 to adapt rules of procedure that include a structure for public comment. This public comment period is reserved for the public statements on any manner or issue that is relevant and germane to county government. Persons who wish to address the board are required to comply with the following. One, state your name for the record. Two, speak only to the chairperson. Three, stand behind the podium when speaking four, limit comments to three minutes or fewer, and five, follow the direction of the chairperson when speaking. Board rules do not impose restrictions on subject matter. However, failure to follow the direction of the chairperson will result in not being able to talk or being removed from the meeting. The board chairperson reserves the right to sound the gavel when the audience applauds or derides a speaker. On behalf of the Board of Commissioners, we thank you in advance for your compliance with these rules. Is there any public comment? Any public comment in the room? Any public comment on the phone? Any public comment? So next on the agenda, we have closed session. I just wanna make sure that coming out of closed session, there's not gonna be any further business. Is that correct? That's correct, so to adjourn. So closed session is going to be, the county attorney, Greg Nian, has requested a closed session to review legal manners associated with the Kirtland Community College millage. I will make the motion to, uh, to go into closed session right after a break. Uh, uh, discuss with our attorney uh, legal matters. I'll support that. Do I need to put that in the motion? No, after we have a motion with the board to go into closed session. Uh, in the meantime, we'll do a quick five minute break for Commissioner Scott. Yeah. Can, we get a, can we get a roll call vote? Jenny David. Yes. <laughs> Craig Scott. Yes. Mark Serbrook. Yes. Ron Vaughn. Yes. Fred Newbecker. Yes. Perfect time, guys. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's great to man. Take care of those old guys. It's fun. <laughs> now, and Mike can have his copy. So, what was your opinion on the Ingham? Say it again. Make a motion to adjourn uh, the board. Everybody back on? Okay, we have a motion with support to adjourn at 1042. All in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Nice.